Welcome back to Sugar Ray's Greatest Hits. I am Mark McGrath. And here we are back in the Hunter's Nightmare. We can see... Yet more reflections of, of places we've known. This little cul-de-sac here bears striking resemblance to that first lamp in central Yarnum where we met our, our dearly departed friend Gilbert. But, alas, we don't have the luxury of, of remembrances when we have to keep moving. Because we simply gotta collect that drip. Get that good, good top hat. Anyway, hey, our favorite guys are back. It's the Ticks from Kanehurst. So yeah, it could be that they just uh, naturally gravitate towards um, places where a lot of blood has been spilled, because we are in a in a veritable river of the stuff after all right now. Um, but then again, you know, the the ones in Kanehurst were. You know, that was in the waking world, or so I was given to believe, and, and this is uh, uh, a nightmare realm. Yeah, also they can uh, build up poison on you with their blood spitting, so don't let them do that. Of course, at, at this stage in the game, slow poisoning is akin to, like, a, a momentary cough. So, it actually is not that big of a threat. The real threat is them, you know, jumping at you while you try to, to get some health back. And here I am trying out the uh, delayed Molotovs, and they don't seem to be working right. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. Maybe I need them on my, on my quick bar and not just in the menu? Uh... But even, even when locked on to enemies, I find that it's not... Yeah, see that? The regular Molotovs work just fine from the pause menu, so... I don't know what the deal is with the delayed ones. They just were not seem... Did not seem to work right, so... They seem even more worthless to me. Ugh. And yeah. That guy, I must have hit some kind of trigger for their, uh... For that guy's kick. They also appear to have some sort of anus back there, which, uh, gotta say, not a fan of. These things are really freaky. Uh, there's gonna be more of them coming up, but I'm honestly gonna run past the other ones, because, you know, if you, if you want to get Blood Echoes, there's plenty of better sources around here. Many of which are in this very cave. Including this guy. Whoa! So yeah, this guy has uh, a Gatling gun. Basically a portable version of, of Jura's mounted turret. Uh, burns through bullets pretty quick, but, you know, if you can manage to stunlock something with it, it's, uh, you know, pays for itself. He can stunlock you pretty good, too. But this guy loves Call of Duty. In fact, I believe this fella was actually an associate of Jura's, who passed away and was condemned to wander in the nightmare. Which explains why he has uh, a, uh, you know, a modified version of Jura's weapon, as well as the saw spear, which Jura's other ally in the waking world uh, also used. So. Yeah, the weapon of the youngest of Jura's three companions. So, we met one in the waking world, there was one here. As for the third, I honestly don't know. I don't think, not not to my knowledge, is there any other mention of the third companion uh, in this game. But, you know what, I could be wrong. I've not, I'm not as well read and studied up on my, on my lore as some other people out there. Anyway, 
It's worth it to, to dip into this cave for some good upgrade materials and, uh, oh, a rematch! With my, uh, my old friend, the Blood Starved Beast. Retooled as a regular enemy. With, uh, I'm actually not sure if it has less health than it did as a boss, because after all, we fought it as a boss at the beginning of the game. And this is toward the end, so I don't know, I don't know how differently it's scaled. As you can see, she is still pretty tough. Uh, and she ambushes you in the dark, you know, which is not great. But it turns out the secret is just approaching this way where you have more space to maneuver instead of dropping down through that hole in the window. Plus, you also get a, a nice uh, sneak attack opportunity that I, of course, botched in true Jamie fashion. I'm sorry, Mark McGrath. That's my name. I'm Mark McGrath. You, you gotta hang on to your sense of self in this place. That's the first thing they try to take from you. What are you doing, bud? He was doing a little jig. Alright. Here comes the Blood Starved Bay. Uh, as well as my inability to parry properly. I don't know what was wrong with me when I recorded this like a month ago. Oh, okay. You're just gonna stop? Alright, I'll go explore then. Give me my 100,000 blood echoes back. Loot this place of uh, upgrade materials. Okay. Let's go finish this before I pick up that last item, because uh, it's something that I'm gonna have to linger in the menu on for a while, so... Oh, that's why. She got stuck in the wall. Oh, okay. She's out. False alarm. Well, okay, no, she's back in. I, in Dark Souls 3, in the, the smoldering lake deep below the uh, catacombs of Karthus, I, uh, I was fighting a big old crab once, and, uh, both me and the crab clipped through the wall, and I wound up stuck in, uh, just the negative space beyond the wall where there wasn't any level geometry or anything, and I, I, I forget if I was able to get back through the wall or not. I might have just had to use a warp item to get back to the nearest bonfire. <laughs> Speaking of crustaceans and Souls games, I uh, was playing some more Elden Ring today, and uh, I finally got to the part with the giant lobsters. They're very big and 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 tough and scary, uh, and they spit at you from a long way away, and the spit does a lot of damage, but uh, I love lobsters. Look at the lobos. All right. Also got a new weapon. It's a strength weapon. It's the amygdalin arm. Uh, this is a really, a, a really cool weapon just conceptually, as it is, as you might expect, uh, the arm of a lesser amygdala that you wield just like a big club. So it's a, it's a strength weapon. You just mash on people with it. And then, you trick it out, and it turns into a makeshift scythe with, uh, where the scythe, the blade part of the scythe is a, a funky tentacle. Uh, which is crazy disturbing and cool. And very quickly with, uh, Gotta love that shit. Again, I'm not... Uh, I don't have much experience with it, but, uh, you know, maybe on a future playthrough I will, uh, give it some, give it the love it deserves, because it is 
very cool. Oh, and since I died in that cave, all these fucking ticks are back, so let's just run on through. I feel like I did a good enough job showing off this area that I can just, I can be forgiven for just running past all these goddamn ticks. Getting immediately killed by all these shooting guys. Thankfully, these, uh... These guys with the piercing rifles and the, uh... Curved swords are a, a lot squishier than the other hunters with the beast cutters and the uh, boom hammers, so. Where the hell did you come from? Ah, get out of here, man. There's a nice uh, three way fork in the road where first time I played this, I was like, oh, where do I go? Uh, choice paralysis, but, uh. Now I know everything, so... And here's another, uh, outfit set that you get piecemeal, the Constable set. Yeah. Comes a little story of uh, some foreign constables. Chased a beast all the way to Yarnum, this is what they wore. Became victims except for one survivor who devoured the creature whole all by himself. Arnamites are partial to stories of pompous, ignorant foreigners who get freaking killed. They get what's coming to them. Uh, in all of the, um... Oh, I gotta be quiet to sneak past these guys. In all the, um, uh, shots of my other character, President Grixon, that I've been using in this Let's Play, uh, he's wearing the constable set uh, with Ariana's shoes, of course. I was like, what's the funniest... You know, he's already funny looking. What's the funniest outfit I could dress him up in? And hey, here's a friendly face. You're a hunter with your sanity, aren't you? Must have taken a wrong turn, then, eh? Well, we're more alike than you think. This is the hunter's nightmare. Where hunters end up when drunk with blood. You've seen them before. Aimless, wandering hunters slavering like beasts. This is what the poor fools have to look forward to. So, don't be brash. Turn back before it's too late. Unless you've something of an interest in nightmares. Oh yes, I see. You sense a secret within the nightmare and cannot bear to leave it be. As if the spirit of Bergenworth lives on within you. Such inquisitive hunters will relish the nightmare. But beware. Secrets are secrets for a reason. And some do not wish to see them uncovered. Especially when the secrets are particularly unseemly. Beware, respect. Okay. Well, thanks, bud. Nice to see someone with their wits about them here. That is Simon. Uh, who's gonna be... Gonna be sort of our, our buddy... Guide is a strong word. Uh, it'll be our, our our buddy throughout our trapes through the Hunter's Nightmare. As he's uh, pretty much the only sane person we're going to meet. He also... I couldn't really tell from that camera angle. I'll have to get another look at him. I couldn't really tell if he's missing his last two fingers on his right hand or if he just has some, like... Maybe he's got that Dupatrins. Well... Either way, next time maybe, uh, next time you see him, Kate, maybe you can recommend that surgeon who, who, who did our dad's hand. And this, this poor tick is confused. I feel like he saw it. He saw you, Katie, and he was just like, oh no, I saw what you did to those other, those other ticks. Man, you've been following me? Get out of here. Now these guys are all crowded around something. 
Gotta be something good, right? Ooh, an item? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Ow. Oh my god, synchronized monstrosities. Whoop. Okay. Man, I, I didn't even need to dodge. You just whiffed that one completely, man. Okay. Okay, one more hit will do that guy. And then there's one more. What are you spitting at? I'm over here, dipshit. There we go. When you're dead and the tick is one of the dumbest animals on God's green earth. Glad I got to these pants before these guys finished eating them. Anyway. Yeah, it does spit you out by a bunch of ticks, but at least we finally unlocked a shortcut. Right to the, the second half of the level. When I was recording this, I was just like... Oh yeah, you meet Simon and then it's the boss, right? And then it's... Oh, right. There's... Like another entire half of this level that I f forgot about. Uh-oh. Get out of here. Whoop! Dog had just a tiny sliver of health left. I'm focused on the wrong enemy there. I'm like, ooh, I gotta take care of that crow. Got him. Right. There's also these sort of living corpses crawling around in the muck here. They're pretty funky. I believe they'll die if you hit them, or at least react if you hit them, but like... Hell, you might not be able to avoid hitting them, but... You know, take, take care. I think they've suffered enough, don't you? They're here, aren't they? This is hell, after all. Yeah, listen to that. They're having a bad time. Wonder how you get over there. Or up there, for that matter. Well, you gotta fall down from above, that's how. And then just be careful as you make your way across. And you're gonna get the rest of the constable outfit. As for that path, though, nah, it's blocked off. Nothing doing. Those machines are for. There's a couple throughout this level, and they don't really do anything, and you can't interact with them. Are they like gallows or guillotines? It's tough to tell. Whoa! Where'd you come from, mister? Oh man, you can do the quick step, but uh, you're not quite quick enough for Katie. I like this guy's voice. Very guttural. And we get his weapon. I think some of the other ones use it too, and it's, uh, untricked form. The Beast Hunter safe is... sort of the reverse of the saw cleaver. Uh, and, um, 
as you can see by its description, it's also like you know an early an early predecessor to the saw cleaver, basically, because its untricked form is as a long sword to be swung around, albeit in a very cool manner. So it starts as a great sword, uh, but then in its tricked form, it's pretty much just the saw cleaver, the saw spear. Uh, really close to this. Interesting little reversal. Oh, and since... Oh, did not mean to make contact there. I was just mashing the X button to pick up that item. And, uh, yeah, remember when we met Valtir? Uh, uh, Master of the League, all the way back in the Forbidden Woods? Well, uh... If you were to, uh, engage in jolly cooperation with some League Confederates, then you would collect, uh, these little guys and turn them into Valtir in order to rank up in his Covenant. Or you can just do this. The fact that we found one on an NPC hunter in the Nightmare seems to suggest that he was diseased in some sense, which, you know what, that tracks. That tracks with everything else that we've seen here so far, right? Like the whole city's diseased. The city itself. Mm, I'm going to write the, the most, uh completely unreadable uh, op-ed in the world about how the city of Yarnum is in itself a character in Bloodborne. And this part's tough because there's actually two of these big-ass executioner guys wandering around here. There's this guy with that big cannon. And then another one who's right there! Ah! Luckily, I want Blood Echoes more than I fear death at the moment. <laughs> Jump cut. None to see there, folks. As for this weapon, we will also find a, uh, a miniature version of it uh, later on in this level, I believe. It's after the boss. But yeah, it's a, it's a person-sized version of this instead of the gargantuan... You know, ...gun the size of a Harley Davidson that only... Only a big old man like these big men could use. Alright, time for backstabs. Electric backstabs. Fucking get him. Get his ass. Get him out of here. Get him the fuck out of here. Oh, nice dodge. Nick of time. Oh no, he's gonna buff his axe with the magic aura. And then he's gonna die. That's how that shakes out. I'm not sure what I was doing there. be just one of those little moments I forgot to speed up or cut out or what have you. Another new outfit with some interesting lore to tell. Mask of the Madaris Twins, denizens of the Forbidden Woods, likely belonging to the older of the two. The twins grew up in silent kinship with a poisonous snake. Eventually they learned human ways and became hunters. When they discovered vermin, even in their beloved snake, the younger brother is said to have murdered the older. Yeah, so there's some background on the... We, we 
talked briefly about the Madaris Whistle that you would get from Valtir in uh, the Forbidden Woods if you ranked his Covenant. Or you would also get it if you if you killed him. Uh, but if you kill Valtir, then uh, an NPC hunter spawns uh, just next to the lamp in the Forbidden Woods, and um, killing him is what gets you the Madaris Whistle, because he actually uses it in combat. So now we can, we can safely say that that was the younger of the Madaris twins, who... Uh, killed the elder brother, condemning him to life in the nightmare, apparently. Although, he seems to have transcended even the nightmare at this point, leaving only his clothing behind. Hey there, buddy. Can't get away from me. Give me them chunks. And ooh, a summon sign. Must be a boss coming up. I love this part, too. You see this shadow here, and then <gasps> it moved <gasps> behind you. That's excellent design. I love that. It reminds me of the part in Uncharted 2 where it's like a big wide shot of you climbing a icy cliff in an ice cave, and then suddenly something like really close up in the foreground, up in the corner. Something moves. It's like, oh, and it turns out it was a Yeti. It's like, whoa. It's like you can see it the whole time, but your first time, you're probably not going to notice it. A really good scare. It's very, uh, almost like a Sam Raimi kind of uh, thing. Or like. Anyway, it's worth coming down here, because guess where you come out on the other side? Well, hold that thought. What the fuck is this? It's a... lady? In a snail shell who fell from the... sky? Okay. That's... Okay, I'm, I'm so surprised I can't even navigate menus properly. Anyway, another one of the, probably one of the coolest weapons in the DLC, I'll say, the Whirly Gig Saw. Uh, in fact, it's what Valtry uses. A lot, of, a lot of lore about the League in this first part of the Hunter's Nightmare. Uh, it untricked, it is simply a, a mace, or honestly just seems like a big stick. Um... You just swing it around. And you charge it up. Uh, but when you trick it out, it turns into a two-hand weapon with this big old pizza cutter. Honestly, one of the coolest weapons in the game. Uh, I'm going to be upgrading it and using it a little bit throughout the next uh, 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 area after the upcoming boss. Uh, but I'm not super great with it as much as I am with the saw spear. Etc. Uh, there is one weapon. Uh, my favorite weapon in the, DL in the DLC is toward the end, and it's also the hardest weapon in the game to get. I'm going to be getting that, and I'm going to be plus tenning it, and uh, using it some on the on the final boss of the DLC, uh, because it's also worth showing off for cool story reasons. And oh, cheeky witch of Hemwick just hanging out there. Blends right into the background. Oh, this poor guy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, man, I know you're in a rough spot. This is probably the last thing you want to hear right now, but there's there's nothing good on that side of the fence either. It's 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 like this basically all throughout. I don't know. Maybe he just needs the bathroom. But again, everything sucks, you know? What's stopping you from just going here? You know, if you're already a... If you're already fucking... Oh, Frank Cotton. That was his name, from Hellraiser. You might as well just pee yourself right now. 